Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm Sam Albanese from the National Weather Service. And to start with, we do have some uh, impactful weather to, to discuss. There's a freezing rain advisory that's going to be in effect in the Copper River Basin until tomorrow morning around 6 a.m. Uh, some icing conditions are, or rain just falling on the icy roads is causing some very hazardous travel conditions in the Copper River Basin. We also do have uh, a uh, blizzard warning along the northwest Arctic coast through tomorrow morning, as well as blowing snow advisories from there down through the Bering Strait into the uh, St. Lawrence Island area through tomorrow morning as well. So now with that said, let's take a look at our satellite imagery and see what's going on that's causing all this. And taking a look at the North Pacific uh, view, in particular, this is the storm system that's kind of moved up. It, it, it's pushed into that eastern Bering Sea, and it has a real strong southerly push, a lot of warm air that's come over the state of Alaska. And on, when you look at this uh, loop in motion one more time, the colder air is coming in from behind and also right up in advance of this system. So still the, the northwest Arctic coast, north of the Brooks Range is still relatively cold. It's warm enough all the way on up to the Kotzebue Sound area where there's a mixture of rain and snow there as opposed to just uh, straight snow. Taking a look at the Gulf of Alaska, the GOES satellite imagery over the mainland, and here's where you can really get a good idea of what's going on. Strong southerly push right on up into the state of Alaska as you put the loop in motion, and you can see this warm moist air just flowing right into the uh, mainland. Now what's happened is that warm moist air didn't really scour out the cold air in places like in the Copper River Basin, and there was also freezing rain over this western interior earlier today. Th those advisories have since come down. That's what causes that those freezing rain conditions. Plus you have some very cold soaked grounds. So even if it is just rain falling, it's, it makes that, that rain falls on the ice and the, the snow pack and it just sits there and it's incredibly slippery. In Southeast Alaska, rain in the uh, northern two thirds of the Panhandle with a mixture of snow or just straight snow up through the Chilkoot and White Pass area. So uh, uh, running that loop one more time, you can just see all this moisture flowing on up into the, into the state and now I'll get to the surface map, which I've already been discussing, and you can really see what's going on. Rain in the Panhandle, mixture of rain and snow to the north. Rain heavy at times in that Prince William Sound area. That freezing rain was occurring in the Copper River Basin. There was some rain mixed with snow at the higher elevation. Same thing in the Susitna Valley, and don't be surprised if you do also see some freezing rain in, in some locations uh, in the Susitna Valley. Uh, that's, that's also a potential there. Very warm air came up over southwestern Alaska, rain or rain showers over that portion of the state, a mixture of rain and snow as we've gone on up into the Norton Sound area, and then into the Cottesview Sound area, snow showers, there was also a mixture of rain and snow. On the north side of this front with the snow, there was strong winds, blowing snow, reducing visibilities, thus the, uh, the uh, winter weather advisory for blowing snow there. Behind this low pressure system, snow showers in that flow pattern. Taking a look now at the forecast for tonight. Southeast Alaska is going to continue to see some rain. Expect a mixture of rain and snow in the northern Panhandle. I kind of left that swath of mixture of rain and snow out across this region. Copper River Basin, rain and snow mixed. Mixture of rain and uh, snow. Also expect some uh, freezing rain to continue through the Copper River Basin, particularly from about Eureka to the east. 
uh, is what you can expect. Uh, some pretty hazard, hazardous conditions there. Up north of the uh, Alaska Range into the uh, Tanana Valley and the upper Yukon Valley, scattered snow shower type activity overnight. May briefly have some rain mixed in with it, but generally some scattered snow shower activity. Western Alaska, well, in the Bristol Bay area, rain or, or uh, rain showers is what you can expect there. Move on up into the middle Kuskokwim Valley and the Kuskokwim Delta, the Yukon Delta, the Seward Peninsula, Kotzebue Sound, rain and snow mixed is what we're expecting. Snow with some blowing snow over the St. Lawrence Island region through the Bering Strait, snow and blizzard conditions along that northwest Arctic coast. Um, Coming down behind this low pressure system in the Pribloff Islands, a mixture of rain and snow showers. Rain snow showers in the eastern Aleutian Islands with uh, snow showers to the central and western Aleutian Islands is what you should expect. By Sunday, we still have this big push of warm air coming over the state. Expect southeast Alaska, the northern, uh, the middle portion of the Panhandle to be in the rain. Rain and snow mixed or sh rain and snow, show snow showers mixed in the northern Panhandle up into the uh, Haines Skagway area, well, Haines Skagway rain showers up into the pass, a mixture of snow with those. Rain continuing in the Prince William Sound area, showers as we move on over towards Kodiak Island and the Bristol Bay area. And then you get into your mixture of rain and snow as there's still a little bit of some, there, there's going to be some colder air coming back into the picture for the southwestern and, and western interior portion of the state, right on up to the Sewer Peninsula, continuation of the mixed rain and snow showers there. Across the uh, central to eastern interior, North of the Alaska Range, expect some snow showers there. Snow showers along the Brooks Range, north of the, uh, the uh, Brooks Range on the uh, lee side of that. You may see some breaks in the clouds there. But then along the Arctic coast itself, with those snow showers, windy conditions and blowing snow, uh, significantly reducing visibilities below a mile in many places. Uh, blowing snow right on down through that Bering Strait region initially, but late in the day it's going to become mixed with rain and then it won't be as much of a problem. Snow showers across the Pribloff Islands as that cold front pushes through. Scattered snow showers as we go on out across the Aleutian Islands. And then there's a, a bit of a low pressure system out in the extreme western Aleutian Islands. And that'll produce some snow out in that region. By Monday, we're starting to see less moisture coming over the state, but still along this North Gulf Coast region, it's onshore flow, rain continuing in the Prince William Sound area becoming showery, rain in the Yakutat area into the northern Panhandle, mixture of rain and snow persisting in the Chilkoot White Pass area. Some rain and snow showers are expected along the Alaska Range, right on down into the Susitna Valley and the Cook Inlet region. And if enough cold air does come in with this system rapidly enough on Monday, we may actually see a shot of snow come up Cook Inlet across the uh, Anchorage to Palmer Wasilla area, but that's uh, real iffy right now. As we take a look at the uh, northwest portion of the state up through the Bering Strait and the Seward Peninsula, this bit of a cold front moves through, expect some snow showers across that region. Snow showers along the Brooks Range, snow with some blowing snow can be expected along the northwest Arctic coast, though not blizzard conditions. Snow showers over the central uh, to northern Bering Sea. And then as we move on down towards the Aleutian Islands, basically cloudy conditions. There's a chance you may see a rain shower or two over the Alaska Peninsula. And then across the interior, there's just a slight chance of some snow showers as we go right on up the Yukon River Valley to the upper Yukon River Valley uh, during the day Monday. Taking a look now at temperatures around the state today. Southeast Alaska, rather warm in the mid to upper 40s in the central to southern Panhandle, mid 30s in the northern Panhandle, cooler as you get on up into the pass there. 40 degree readings along the North Gulf Coast, 50, uh, 52 in the Homer area. This is uh, very much like fall weather when you really look at these temperatures. 30s into the Susitna Valley, 20s and even 30s in the Copper River Basin, 30s and 40s as you get on north of the Alaska Range. The 40s are in that Delta Junction area where it was somewhat of a Chinook uh, scenario that caused that. Mid 20s up into the uh, central interior. Moving on up to the Arctic coast, um, once you get along the Brooks Range in the 20s and 30s on the south side of the Brooks Range, then cross the Brooks Range and temperatures in the single digits uh, is generally what you are seeing there. The uh, Seward Peninsula, Cottesville Sound area, it's Norton Sound area, 20s and 30s are what we were seeing there. 30s to 40s as we move on down towards the Yukon and Kuskokwim Deltas. Uh, Bristol Bay region in the 40s, near, near 50 in some areas there. 40, uh, upper 30s to mid 40s across the Alaska Peninsula, the uh, eastern Aleutian Islands, mid 30s in the Pribloff Islands, and mid to low 30s as you continue on out along the Aleutian Islands out to Shemya. Taking a look at our temperatures for tonight. 
Expect southeast Alaska to see a little bit of cooling, not much. Mid, four, mid 30s to mid 40s is what you can expect there. 40 degree readings persisting along the North Gulf Coast down to Kodiak Island. Mid 30s in the South Central region. Copper River Basin, you're probably not even going to, your low temperatures probably occurring now and it's going to stay at that and maybe even rise a little bit overnight. The eastern interior temperatures will cool down a little bit, but generally 30s and uh, 20s and 30s are what you should expect there. Teens as you get on up into the upper Yukon Valley, the eastern Brooks Range, probably going to see your temperatures uh, rise overnight. North of the Brooks Range and the Arctic Coast temperatures are going to drop a little bit. Uh, some, some areas may see single digits below zero. Temperatures in the Seward Peninsula region, Cosby Sound, Norton Sound, basically staying close to where they're at. 20s and 30s are what you should expect there. 30s across the Yukon and Cuscombe Delta down to the Bristol Bay region. 30s and 40s across the Alaska Peninsula to the mid to low 30s as we move on out along the Aleutian Islands and dropping below freezing in the Pribilof Islands down to about 30 there. For tomorrow, a continuation of this warm pattern. Southeast Alaska expect your temperatures. You may see some areas in the southern panhandle getting near 50 degrees. 40s as you move on up into the northern panhandle. 40s to near 50 along the North Gulf Coast. Temperatures should come up into the 40s in the Copper River Basin. And then even into the uh, eastern interior north of the Alaska Range. Very warm conditions. Temperatures should all be above freezing tomorrow. Above freezing temperatures essentially is what you should expect throughout the state to the Brooks Range for tomorrow. And then once you get along the Brooks Range in the 20s, possibly teens, single digits above on the North Slope. And then out into the uh, Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutian Islands, 40s from the peninsula out into the to the mid 30s across the Aleutian Islands, staying right around freezing in the Pribilof Island and expected temperatures to re also remain right around freezing out in the western Aleutian Islands. Flying weather for tomorrow, southeast Alaska, marginal conditions in the central panhandle, IFR as you move on up into the northern panhandle, north Gulf Coast and the Yakutat area right on over to the Prince William Sound area along the Chugach Mountains, IFR conditions there. There'll be a whole uh, of uh, VFR conditions in the central Copper River Basin, but generally around the Wrangells, along the Alaska Range, uh, down through the Susitna Valley, marginal to IFR conditions are what you should expect there. Marginal to, I to IFR conditions along the Cuscoe Mountains, marginal to IFR conditions uh, in the Norton Sound region to the Seward Peninsula, marginal to IFR conditions along the uh, slopes of the, the south slopes of the Brooks Range, marginal to IFR conditions along the Arctic Coast, widespread marginal conditions over the eastern Bering Sea, West of that, west of the, uh, the uh, cold front, expect more uh, VFR conditions in the western and central Bering Sea. For our passes tomorrow, expect IFR conditions for Anaktuvik as well as Adigan Pass. IFR conditions along the Alaska Range, Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, as well as Rainy Pass. Uh, IFR conditions for Windy Pass. IFR to marginal conditions for Isabel Pass and marginal conditions for Mentasta Pass. Down to the Chugach Mountains, expect marginal conditions for Tanita Pass. IFR conditions for Portage Pass and then Southeast Alaska and Chilkoot and White Pass expect IFR conditions. Taking a look at our freezing levels for tomorrow. The freezing level basically is going to be up to about 2,000 feet across the interior um, to just south of the Brooks Range, sloping to about 8 to 10,000 feet as you get down into the southern panhandle, dropping down to the surface across the Bering Sea in the western Aleutian Islands and about 1,000 feet along the central and eastern Aleutian Islands to the Alaska Peninsula. For our icing tomorrow, expect some uh, isolated severe to occasional severe icing potentially along that North Gulf Coast. Uh, light to isolated moderate icing for, to 18,000 feet in the northern panhandle right on down across Kodiak Island. Some moderate icing below about 15,000 feet over the Alaska Range and to about 13,000 feet as we get over the Western Brooks Range. So uh, a lot of areas of icing to be concerned about tomorrow if you're going to be flying. For a jet stream tomorrow, the main jet is well south of the state at about 150 knots, tapers off to 70 knots, and then 100 knots coming up through south central Alaska over the top of the ridge and goes down through Canada back into the western U.S. at about 90 knots. Down to the 9,000 foot level, here we have about 40 knot winds across the northern pan and a lighter winds to the south, lighter winds around 20 knots into the north Gulf Coast, 35 to 45 knots over southwestern Alaska. Much lighter winds over the interior, 15 to 20 knots, about uh, 20 knot winds from the uh, central Arctic coast to the east, although 30 knots right over the uh, uh, U.S. Canadian border there. 40 knot winds coming up through that Bering Strait region, 25, 20 to 25 knot winds over the eastern Bering Sea, and about 
uh, 35 to 40 knot winds over the western Bering Sea with 25 knot winds over the central Aleutian Islands. Down to that 3,000 foot level, light winds over much of the Panhandle until you get into the extreme northern Panhandle, 50 knot winds coming onshore there, 20 to 30 knot winds coming onshore in the south central region. Um, light winds over the eastern interior to the eastern Arctic coast. Stronger winds around our main low pressure area of about 30 to 40 knot winds across much of that region, 20 to 30 knot winds in the eastern Bering Sea. And that takes us to our turbulence where we expect some isolated moderate turbulence in the northern Panhandle, isolated moderate turbulence to occasional moderate turbulence along the Alaska Range, as well as the Kuskokwim Mountains down to the Kilbuck Mountains and the eastern Alaska Peninsula. That wraps up this portion of the show. Enjoy the segment and come back for the marine forecast. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. This evening, our guest is Jeff Oshinsky. Jeff has had a distinguished career in federal service for 27 years, with 17 years in Alaska. In the early 90s, he was the manager at the ARTCC, later, <coughs> excuse me, later managed the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit and the Anchorage Volcano Advisory Center. He's now the Deputy Chief for Environmental and Scientific Services Division. In shor short, the Regional Weatherman. Jeff, welcome to Hangar Flying. Oh, great. Thanks. It's great to be here, Harry. Oh, welcome back. You've been on the program before. Thanks, yes. Um, obviously, weather forecasting is extremely important to pilots and operators and people involved in aviation. Uh, and you, the National Weather Service, has got a big operation up here in Alaska. I think latest numbers I saw were 240 people in 19 stations. It's a big effort. And, and I got to tell you, I appreciate what, what you guys do. You've got a tough challenge and, and it makes AV, what, doing the fresh professional job that you do contributes significantly to aviation safety. So thanks very much. Let's talk a little bit about one initiative that you and I had talked about with future potential. Um, so describe some of the modernization efforts. Well, Harry, we're um, in the process now of modernizing our aviation services in Alaska. And what that means is basically going from an old way of doing business of typing up forecasts and uh, creating graphics by hand, essentially, to going to this digital database. And what this means, will, will it will allow us to be able to derive a whole uh, variety of products, basically whatever the users really want from this digital database. And the beauty of that is all our offices in Alaska will be tied to this database. So whether you're a pilot or a mariner or whatever you, your forecast you happen to look at, it's all being pulled from the same database and will be consistent. So give me an idea, give, give our viewers an idea what uh, a new product might look like. What, what exactly will it do that we can't have done now? Well, I think the biggest change that we're going to see is we're going to see probably better resolution than the product. So, in other words, we, we, we have the standard products like the MVFR, IFR flying charts and turbulence and icing. I think what we'll be able to see in the future is we'll be able to see more resolution and granularity in the forecasts. So we'll be able to forecast more distinct layers of icing and turbulence, and we'll be also be able to put these products out on a more frequent basis. Now, one of the things you mentioned to me, if I got it right, I think is very futuristic. And let's see if I can describe it right. So right now, if I'm coming back into Anchorage, I can get a terminal forecast for Anchorage, or I can get a terminal forecast for Elmendorf. But I think you're talking about maybe someday in the future, dirt strip XYZ with you can give me an idea what the weather's going to be there. I think so. I think so. It's pretty exciting with this digital database. Part of the initiative is to improve our computer modeling. And of course, the computer modeling sort of drives how well we can produce forecasts. And as we get better and more specific models for Alaska that show the, the differences uh, geographically, we'll be able to push that into this process. And so I think, you know, this may be a few years out, but I think we'll be at a point sometime where a pilot can take his, um, we'll say his cursor of his mouse on his computer and move it to any location in the state. 
and click on that spot that he's interested in, he or she is interested in, and get a forecast that'll have aviation weather parameters for that site. Wow. I, I really do think that we'll, we're, we'll get there in, in a few years. That's huge. I mean, when you add that to the introduction of weather cams, we're going to have, it's really going to make an impact. It's going to open the doors. We keep saying that this is a major paradigm shift in aviation forecasts. And the, the really exciting part for us here in Alaska is we're on the cutting edge. We're sort of the pathfinder for these digital aviation services. Nobody else is doing this in the country, and they're, all eyes are, are focused on us up here in Alaska. <laughs> I'm going to ask this last question. Um, about forecasting. Is it science, black magic, or luck, or all three? <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because uh, I, I saw a cartoon uh, repeatedly throughout my career that said meteorology is 60% science and 40% art. And I've seen the numbers flipped around, 60% art, 40% science. And so the big joke is that it's, it's sort of a combination of all those things. When you talk to forecasters, they often talk about having a gut feeling. We're trained to understand patterns and weather patterns dictate certain weather conditions. So, you know, many of us can look at a weather map and look at a pattern and say, you know, I don't think they're gonna get the rain in Anchorage. I think it's gonna be a turbulence event on the Chugash or whatever, just based on the weather pattern. And a small change in that pattern can totally change the weather for a given location. Wow. Well, all kidding aside, uh, I, I appreciate what you do and your fellow forecasters and the whole weather uh, business. And I think you've saved a lot of people and, 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 say, uh, and, and prevented a lot of accidents. So thanks very much for your efforts. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks Absolutely. for being on the program. Thanks a lot, Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. And again, I want to remind you, November 15th, we're going to have our fall safety seminar. That's Alaska Aviation Safety Foundation, November 15th. More details to follow. Until later, until next time, fly safe. Welcome back, and now let's get started by taking a look at the uh, marine weather in southeast Alaska. Southeast winds across much of the area, though, up in the uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area, south winds. Uh, 30 knot winds up there, 20 knot winds in the inside waters, 25 to 30 knot winds in the southern outside waters with 35 knot southeasterly winds right on up into the east Gulf Coast region from just off of Sitka. Taking a look at the area for Monday, expect the winds to be much lighter in the southern panhandle southeast, about 10 to 15 knots. South winds 25 knots up through Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay. Winds dropping off in the southern outside waters to south 15 knots. And then as we get up on over towards the uh, east Gulf Coast and the just offshore of the uh, Sitka area, winds will be out of the west about 10 to 15 knots. Taking a look at the forecast now for Sunday for the uh, south central region. 25 knot winds out of the east in Prince William Sound. Southeast winds 20 knots along the north Gulf Coast. And then as we get on over to the Barren Islands, South to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots there. Kodiak Island, 30 knot southerly winds on the south side of the island with 20 knot winds across Shilakov Strait. And then in Cook Inlet itself, winds gonna be light and variable in the northern inlet with east winds about 25 knots south of Calgan Island. Taking a look at the forecast for Monday, light and variable winds in Prince William Sound, southwest winds from south of Kodiak Island to just off the uh, Barren Islands and the north Gulf Coast at about 20 knots. West winds 20 knots from Shilakov straight on up to the Augustine area with south winds in Cook Inlet at about 15 knots. Taking a look now at the Alaska Peninsula for Sunday. Expect your winds to be out of the, predominantly out of the south though, southeast winds in Bristol Bay. All the winds are expected to be 25 knots across the region. Taking a look at the area for Monday, winds are going to drop off to about 15 knots out of the south to southwest from the uh, south side of the Alaska Peninsula to the north side and into Bristol Bay with southwest winds about 15 to 20 knots south of the eastern Alaska Peninsula. For the Aleutian Islands, expect your winds on Sunday to be out of the uh, southwest across the eastern Aleutian Islands, west over the uh, central to uh, western, uh, well, the central Aleutian Islands, west to northwest, all 25 knots there. 25 knot winds as we get on out towards Kiska and 25 knot westerly winds out over the extreme western Aleutian Islands out towards Shemya. Taking a look at the forecast uh, for Monday there, light and variable winds around the uh, eastern Aleutian Islands, 10 to 15 knots there. 
south of the uh, uh, the Alu eastern Aleutian Islands, 10 knot winds there, 20 knot winds, uh, southwesterly winds, basically west of Nikolsky on over to, to Adak and Atka, but southwest winds, 15 knots south of that region. And then out into the western Aleutian Islands, west winds, about 20 knots is what you should anticipate. For our Bering Sea coastal waters for Sunday, right along the coast itself, southeast winds, both north and south of Nunavak Island at 25 knots right on up to the St. Lawrence Island region. Then as we move on over to the St. Matthew Island region down to the Pribilof Islands, winds are going to be out of the west about 25 to 30 knots. On Monday, expect your winds to be out of the south 25 to 30 knots from St. Paul Island and the Pribilof on up to the St. Matthew Island region. South to southwest winds 15 to 25 knots around the Nunavak Island area with southwest winds 20 knots. So again on up towards that St. Lawrence Island region. For the Arctic coastal waters on Sunday, expect southeast winds 20 knots outside of Cotsview Sound, gale force winds from Wainwright right on down to Point Hope out of the east, and then 25 knot winds from Barrow to the east to the uh, Kaktovik area. For Monday, expect the winds outside of Cotsview Sound to remain out of the southeast at 20 knots, 20 knot winds off Cape Lisburn, and then from Barrow uh, to uh, Point Lay and, and that uh, Wainwright area, east winds 30 knots, East winds 30 knots in that uh, Prudhoe Bay to Dead Horse region with 40 knot easterly winds out over towards Kaktovik. <coughs> Excuse me. Taking a look now at the forecast again for tonight. Important thing to remember, we do have a freezing rain advisory for the Copper River Basin as well as some rain or mixed rain and snow across that region. There's uh, a blizzard warning up along the northwest Arctic coast through tomorrow morning. Blowing snow advisory right on down through the Bering Strait region to the St. Lawrence Island area. So some pretty uh, significant weather that's going to be occurring across these region, regions. Rain from the northern panhandle across the north Gulf Coast into the south central region, possibly mixed with snow as you get on up into the Susitna Valley. Rain and rain showers down towards Kodiak and the Bristol Bay region. Some rain showers across the Alaska Peninsula to the eastern Aleutian Islands with snow showers coming in behind that cold, sh uh, cold front. We're out of time for the show this evening. Thank you for watching and have a good evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.